All right, class, this is some of your Chapter 7 review for your test that's coming up this weekend. So, um, mainly, again, just like with Chapter 6, most of this stuff can be done with your calculator. So, I'm just going to go through and show you how to use your calculator menus to do this. So, we're constructing a 90% confidence interval to estimate the true percentage of yellow peas. So, um, this many were green, this many were yellow. So, uh, a 90% confidence interval for the percentage of green peas. So that's going to be go under test. That's going to be a one prop Z for it because it's um, dealing with percentages or proportions. So um, there were 154 that were yellow. Make sure you're reading it because it's 154 plus 432 is our total number for N. Okay, because they're both together. Uh, this is the part that was green, this is the part that was yellow, but for N, it's the total number. So, 154 out of uh, 586, and our confidence level is 90, so we go down and tell it to calculate. Now, um, this is 20, uh, 0.23289, but it's also 23.28%. So it wants us around to three decimal places, they don't give us the percent things out beside these bars, so just leave them as decimals. So to three decimal places, uh, 0.233, and then the upper one to three decimal places was 0.923. Oops, sorry, 0.293. All right. Um, Part B says, given the percentage of yellow offspring is not 25%, okay, it's not 25%, do the results contradict expectations? Uh, no, because the confidence interval includes 25%, so the, uh, the true percentage could easily equal 25%. So 25% is in here. So it could definitely be 25%. It's, there is a it's possible uh, that 25% could be roughly the population percentage because it's right dead, you know, not square dead in the middle of this thing, but it is con contained in our interval. All right, question 11. Um, there, these are weights of bags of candies. All right, so these are all the different colors of candies that we got. Uh, the proportion of red candy. Now, don't m go through and multiply these numbers. Uh, you know, by the totals or anything like that. This is just strictly a count. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reds. So uh, seven and six is thirteen. That's twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five total. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven were red. So that's seven out of thirty-five. Oops. 7 out of 35, which is 0.2 or 20% of them are red. Okay, so don't overthink it. Don't, you know, don't think that these that you're having to do something with these specific numbers. And now they want us to do a confidence interval. So this is again stat. We're looking for one prop Z, right? Because it's about percentages, right? P's in the middle there. Now, uh, what's the total? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are red, there are 35 total, and we want to do a 90% confidence interval. All right, now these are changed to percentages, so we do need to move these decimal points over two places, and then round to one decimal place. So if I move the decimal point right here, that's 8.9%. All right, and then on the other one, I move the decimal point over two places to make it a percent, that's 31.1% when I round it. All right, is the result consistent with the 34% rate reported by the candy maker? No, 34% does not fall in there. So that is not consistent. All right, and then a question like this where we're calculating the margin of error. Okay, this is for a, a, a Z interval. Okay, because we have a Z score and we know the population standard deviation. So calculate the margin of error if the necessary requirements are satisfied. 
the confidence level is 99%, the sample size is n equals 11, red flag, all right, that's below 30, the original population is normally distributed, so that's okay. So we do have a bell curve because of this, all right? So um, this is this is okay. If it was if it was n equals 11, this was not normally distributed, the requirements wouldn't be satisfied. But here, everything's fine. All right, the margin of error. Now, how do we compute this? Well, we need to find what z alpha over 2 is. So your confidence level is 99%. Remember, alpha is 100% minus this. So alpha is 1%. So that means 1% is left over in the two tails. And now we, we have to divide it by 2 because of the, the percent goes to each tail. So half of that 1% goes to the left tail, half goes to the right tail. So to find z alpha, I need to do inverse norm. All right, and then I'm going to do uh, 1 minus alpha over 2. So alpha is 1% because that's 99% taken from 100, so 1%. And I divide that 2 because there's two tails. All right, and then there is my value for uh, z alpha over 2. Now I'm going to do something on my calculator. I'm going to press store sto, and then I'm going to press alpha z. Okay. So now z equals that, z alpha over 2 equals that number. All right, now the standard deviation is 19, n equals 11, so I have everything I need to compute it. So I'm going to type in z, or I just could have pressed times here. I didn't have to do it that way, but I just wanted to make it look like the formula. Times, this is uh, sigma, that's the population standard deviation, so 19 divided by the square root of a sample size is 11. So 14 point, I want three places, 14.756. Alright, so that's how you compute the margin of error when you have this information. But you need to, the first part, are the, are the requirements satisfied? That's central limit theorem. Either this is above 30 or the population is normally distributed. All right, one of these types of questions where you're given the interval, the output of your TI-83 or 84 display, and you want to find it in this form, well, there's the mean. All right, so the mean comes first. So 23.28 is your mean. And then your margin of error, the easiest way to find your margin of error is to just subtract the mean from one of these two numbers. All right, so use the upper number minus the mean or you can use the mean minus the lower number. All right, either way it's going to give you that 1.232. Alright, so that's how you can do that given this display. There's the first part of it, right underneath it. it always gives you the, the center of your confidence interval when you do it on your calculator. But to get the margin of error you just add or subtract I mean, sorry, subtract um, either the l larger number minus the mean or the mean minus the smaller number. All right, and then here is a confidence interval about a population mean. Okay, so this is moving towards 7.3 section. So it's still underneath the test menu. It's now a Z interval. Okay, this is a Z interval because I know the population standard deviation. So I'm going to highlight Z interval. All right, we don't have the data. All we have are the statistics. So I'm going to tell it stats. All right, and then what's our population standard deviation? All right, 19,401. What is our sample mean? 69,400. What's our sample size? 43. All right, and then what is our confidence level? 99. Right, and then we calculate it, and there's our numbers. 61,779 for our lower, and then for our upper, 77,021 dollars. All right, so um, again, a lot, so much of this stuff can be done straight from your calculator. All right, and then, um, as we're making our way to 7.4, one of the big key things now is 
is it Z or is it T when we're estimating a mean? So um, the confidence level is 98%. Our sample size is 24. So the standard deviation of the population is unknown, but the population appears to be normally distributed. Okay, this makes this not being 30 okay. All right, but this because the standard deviation is unknown, that's going to eliminate the critical Z. It's got to be a critical T. All right, so these standard normal standard normal this icon right here is the t table so this is what we're going to need all right so the confidence level is 98 percent that means the area in two tails is two percent so we're in this column all right our sample size is 23 that means our i mean our 24 that means our degrees of freedom is 23 so this is the row we're looking at and there's the area in two tails 23 so 2.5 is our critical number that we're looking for. All right, and do make sure that you pick the right um, symbol. All right, but because this was uh, less than than 30, again, this needs to be normally distributed. Then once that's satisfied, then we look to is this known or not. If this is unknown, that means we're looking for a critical T. If this is known, we're looking for a critical Z. All right, and then this last one, when we we're constructing a confidence interval and the margin of error, assuming the population has a normal distri distribution, all right? We don't not really necessary since our sample size is so large, all right? we have a sample standard deviation. Remember that's not the same as population standard deviation. We can always get a sample standard deviation. We can't always be known, uh, be told what the population standard deviation is. So this is T. Now the margin of error, there's a whole long process to get your margin of error that you can do. You can use the, the critical T values. I'm going to show you the easy way to get your margin of error. Go in and actually run the test this is a T interval which is below here alright we have statistics alright it wants to know what's my mean my mean is 3 what's my standard deviation 5.8 my sample size is 61 and my confidence level is 90 Oops, 90 calculate it alright it takes a little longer for a Z interval so here's the lower number, here's the upper number, but remember it wants margin of error. And remember the shortcut for margin of error is take your upper number, subtract the mean, so 4.2406 minus 3 is 1.2406. So rounded to one decimal place, that's going to be 1.2. Alright, and then what's the confidence interval? That's what I just computed. Alright, they want them rounded to one decimal place as well. So 1. Mm, roughly 8 and 4.2. Alright, so that's the quick easy way to compute the margin of error rather than going through the process of finding the critical T value, multiplying by S divided by the square root of N, all that stuff. Just run the test, run the uh, interval on your calculator and then subtract the mean from the upper number. All right, just make sure to, to round here. If, if you get counted off for rounding, just let me know and I'll um, fix it on your test.